Many of us have had nights out with the girls where we spend hours getting ready to go out, go to the local bar, have some drinks, maybe hit on some guys, meet some new people, and maybe get a little too under the influence. Some of us are well past this stage in life. I know I am. I like, you know, can't hang past like one glass of wine. And some of us might be recovering from last night's hangover as we speak. And that's the circumstances of the case that we're going to be talking about today. A case that is huge in the media right now and is actually creating quite the division in the town of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Many people asking, when does personal accountability take over? And when is it appropriate to blame the circumstances that took place leading up to the tragedy? So I'm going to give you the facts of the case and let you decide which side of the line that you stand on. Hey guys, my name is Annie Elise. This is 10 to Life. Let's dive right in. This is Tend to Life with Annie Elise. Do you ever feel like you just need a few moments to just wind down and have some time for yourself? Because I know I do, literally every single day, and I'm sure so many of you do as well. So I am going to share with you my secret life hack. Merge Gardens is the perfect escape, providing you with your own sanctuary to go spend some quiet time in and to take your mind off your responsibilities for a second. Merge Gardens is a casual and fun game where you build your own garden by filling it up with trees, plants, butterflies, birds, ponds, all this beautiful stuff while trying to solve the mystery surrounding it at the same time. My favorite part about Merge Gardens is the beautiful animations, particularly the flowers. There is something just so calming about it, and I love taking some of the smaller arrangements and compiling them to make these larger ones. I play it when I just need to shut off my mind and find a moment of zen for myself during the day. If you want to try Merge Gardens too, which I totally think you should, it's free to play and you can download the game via the link in my description or by scanning the QR code on screen. I'm telling you guys, you've got to try this out for yourself. You'll love it. Go download it and thank me later. Madison Kennedy Brooks is a 19-year-old college student at Louisiana State University who was finishing up her last semester of her sophomore year. She was excelling in school, completing 34 credit hours her freshman year while working and being very involved in her sorority, Alpha Phi. She even stayed in Baton Rouge over the summer to complete summer classes and jump ahead. She was recently accepted into the Manship School of Mass Communication, and before college, Madison graduated from St. Scalactia Academy in 2021, where she was an honor roll student, a cheerleader, a member of Doves for Life, the Spirit Club, and a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. She was a go-getter and excelled in all aspects of her life. She enjoyed skydiving, skiing, traveling, and more importantly, just spending time with her friends and family. With such a bright future ahead of her, full of possibilities, her entire life changed in a flash on the evening of January 14th, 2023. At around 10 p.m., Maddie arrived at a local bar called Reggie's in Tigerland, located on Bob Petit Boulevard. Shortly after her arrival, at 10.18 p.m., four other men, 18-year-old Kaysen Carver, 18-year-old Cavion Washington, Cavion's uncle, Everett Lee, who is 28 years old, and an unidentified 17-year-old were all seen on video footage arriving at Reggie's as well. Now, Reggie's Bar is a favorite among younger adults in the area due to it being widely known for serving alcohol to people without the proper identification, but we're going to get into more of that in a bit. So the four men and Maddie had allegedly not known each other at all before this night. But after some drinks and conversations, their night would soon lead to a horrific string of events that left four lives changed forever and left one dead. Maddie was seen at the bar that evening, having drinks as well as those four men who arrived shortly after her. Initially, the group of men ever denied meeting or speaking to Maddie. However, on footage, Maddie and that 17-year-old boy were seen hugging and dancing with one another. Maddie was having a great time, as many college girls do, but at some point, based on the footage, it appeared that she might have been under the influence, perhaps a bit too much. 
The 17-year-old boy helped Maddie as she was seen stumbling and was even seen helping her off the floor after she had fallen. As the bar was closing, Maddie ran out after the group of men and asked them for a ride home. 18-year-old Kaysen agreed because he didn't want to leave her alone with how intoxicated she appeared to be. So Kaysen asked her where her friends were, but Maddie was confused and said she didn't know where they were, so he agreed to give her that ride home. Now, Maddie was allegedly pretty intoxicated by this point, and according to the footage and some of the court documents, it was stated that Maddie was seen on multiple occasions stumbling, trying to catch her balance, and Kaysen had even stated that she was also slurring her speech quite a bit. Good evening to you, friends. I'm Greg Merriweather. We've got breaking news here at 6. WFB has just obtained this video. It apparently shows Madison Brooks leaving the Tigerland Bar, Reggie's, on the night that she was killed. So that's her there in one of those circles. She appears to chase after the men that were walking in that first circle that you saw. So this is another shot across the uh, road there. That's the old Circle K near Tigerland. That is the group, uh, according to sources, Madison Brooks walking with the group as they continue to leave there again that night that all of this happened. An indication that she had consumed too much and may have been overserved. After Maddie catches up with the group of men and they agree to take her home, the four men and Maddie leave the bar at approximately 1.49 a.m. They then are seen walking toward Kaysen's parked vehicle at 1.51 a.m. Now, 18-year-old Kaysen got in the driver's seat. The 28-year-old, Everett, took the passenger seat. The 17-year-old boy and Maddie and the 18-year-old, Cavion Washington, all three sat in the back seat. Kaysen asked Maddie what her address was to give her a ride home, but she allegedly was just slumped over and wasn't really able to answer him given the state of mind that she was in. So Kaysen decided to just start driving around until he ended up pulling the car over near Jennifer Jean Drive and parked the vehicle. Kaysen stated that he overheard the 17-year-old boy ask Maddie five different times if she wanted to have sex with him, which Maddie allegedly gave a verbal consent. Now, according to Kaysen, the 17-year-old boy plus 18-year-old Cavion Washington, both took turns having intercourse with Maddie in the back seat. This all happening while Kaysen and the 28-year-old Everett were still both in the front seats of the car. So this went on for a while. Then finally Kaysen allegedly said, okay, we've got to stop this, let's go. Now, according to an affidavit, during an interview with Kaysen, when he was asked if Maddie was too intoxicated to consent to the activities that were taking place in the back seat, he responded by saying, I guess. So Kaysen then drove around, trying to find out where Maddie lived, before he ended up just dropping her off in a random subdivision. It's unclear what actually happened here, if they just got tired of driving around and let her out of the car, or if Maddie wanted to get out of the car because she was going to call an Uber. There are conflicting stories with what the truth is. Nonetheless, they still dumped her in the streets by herself, still so heavily under the influence that she had trouble walking. Which I want to just point out, if you are so concerned about leaving her at the bar because she was not in a safe state of mind, then two of your buddies allegedly took advantage of her in the backseat and had your way with her, but now suddenly you're okay with leaving that same cloudy-headed person in the streets? Make it make sense. Where is the concern? Where does the concern really lie here? So despite whatever the truth of the reason for the drop-off was, they dropped Maddie off to fend for herself. And that is when tragedy struck Madison Brooks. At around 3 a.m., Maddie was standing in a dark portion of Burbank Drive, near Pelican Lakes Parkway, when she was struck by a rideshare vehicle. Two Good Samaritans reportedly stopped in the pouring rain to perform CPR on Maddie while being guided by first responders who were on the phone. But unfortunately, Maddie later died in the hospital. Medical records from when she was admitted that early morning indicated that her BAC was a 0.319%. Now, according to the University of Notre Dame research, the effects of a BAC between 0.25 and 0.39 are considered to be poisoning and loss of consciousness. Very, very indicative that she was heavily under the influence. Then on January 18th, 2023, a post-mortem examination of Maddie's body was performed by the East Baton Rouge Parish Coroner's Office. During the autopsy, a pathologist reported that the victim had injuries consistent with a sexual attack in her back cavity. 
The coroner confirmed that Maddie's cause of death was multiple traumatic injuries, plus second-degree vehicle collision versus a pedestrian. So upon this revelation and this news, both the 18-year-old Cavion and the 17-year-old boy were arrested and charged with third-degree sex crimes, while the other men were arrested and charged with being accessories to the incident. As for the driver of the rideshare vehicle, he was not charged as he was not impaired at the time of the accident and contacted emergency services immediately upon the accident taking place. Kaysen was being held on a $50,000 bond, 28-year-old Everett on a $75,000 bond, and Cavion on a $150,000 bond. The 17-year-old was booked into a juvenile detention center, and that's where he will remain until his bond hearing, which was pushed to sometime later this month. But all three other men, Cavion, Kaysen, and Everett, bonded out just two days later. All three of the adult suspects appeared in court via video, and they were ordered to remain under house arrest to submit to random drug testing for 180 days and wear ankle monitors. Now here's where things get a little bit gray and where the division really starts to come in. In court, there was apparently video proof showing Maddie consenting to intercourse with both Cavion and the 17-year-old boy. However, when the judge reviewed the video, he stated that all he saw was a young girl slurring her words while the men laughed, and further stated that it seemed incriminating. The prosecutor said in a hearing that the state would be seeking upgraded charges to first degree instead of third degree, and they planned to convene a grand jury in this case. Now, Louisiana's first degree statute carries a mandatory life sentence without the possibility of parole a very serious sentence. So the four men's defense team put out this statement after court. Here are the facts of the case with the latest developments. Ms. Brooks was confirmed on video dancing and talking with the juvenile defendant inside of the bar. Ms. Brooks exited the bar, approached the defendants, and asked them for a ride, which was confirmed on video which was released last night. The two defendants who engaged in a consensual sexual act with Ms. Brooks did so after obtaining verbal consent. The way this is being reported and taken out of context from the police report is factually inaccurate. Ms. Brooks asked to be dropped off at a sorority sister's house in Pelican Lakes. The driver complied. Ms. Brooks left the car on her own volition, saying that she would get an Uber. She is seen on video leaving the car unharmed and in good health. This will be confirmed by video at a later date. Now, this is a very important clarification. The video taken in the car is only a conversation between the parties and do not depict any sexual acts. That was not specified when it was mentioned previously. For any fault of ours, we apologize. As the facts of this case continue to come forth, we believe that intent and consent will be very clear. While we understand that the media has a duty to inform the public, we will not release these videos now. We are working with the DA and will allow the judicial process to take place. Reggie's bar remains closed since the incident, and the Louisiana ATC has confirmed that they have suspended their liquor license following the seriousness of the allegations and the potential threat to public safety. Which, honestly, this should have happened a long time ago. Because a quick search on TikTok will show you what kind of hype this place is in this college town. The videos show students falling over the bar top onto the floor, others drinking straight from the bottles while wearing bar uniforms, and even girls being carried to the bathroom. It's a wild party scene. Some patrons consuming so much booze they can barely keep their balance. This girl falls off the bar. It's happening at one of the most popular college bars in America, Reggie's Bar at the Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge. The bar has faced allegations in the past of being a notorious haven for underage drinking, and today it's at the center of an investigation after the death of an LSU sophomore, Madison Brooks. The bar owner, Darren Adams, has also been in hot water before. When Baton Rouge police raided the bar back in 2017 and suspended 
and suspended its license for 45 days after 37 people were arrested for underage drinking. Also in September of 2015, a 21-year-old was arrested for being under the influence while waving a loaded firearm at people and threatening to shoot. That's not all. Then in January of 2016, Dylan Gordon, who was a star LSU football player, was stabbed multiple times in the bar. And more recently, in May of 2022, 16-year-old Carltez Tucker was shot dead outside of Reggie's. So safe to say, probably not the best or safest place to be or hang around. Now, Reggie's released a statement later after this incident with Maddie, saying that even though Maddie entered the bar with false identification, she wasn't served, nor did she consume any drinks in at least the last hour that she was at Reggie's, which, okay, sure, buddy. Your bar looks like the kind that has, you know, a tight grip on who does and doesn't have access to alcohol. This statement to me feels more like it was a statement to try and cover their own liability in this situation, but that's just my opinion. Now, more recently, news has resurfaced of Cavion Washington's past sexual allegations. On February 3rd, he was arrested and charged with first-degree RAPE for attacking a 12-year-old girl when he was 15 years old. The now teen told sources that she and Cavion met at a pool party when he forced his way into the apartment that she lived in. After the 12-year-old said no to him four or five times, he allegedly pushed her onto the bed, pulled her towel off, and attacked her for almost an hour. Then when he was done, he got up, told her, go check yourself, and then he left. It was nearly a year before the preteen told her mom about the alleged attack. Her mom immediately reported it to police, but the investigation eventually stalled out. It wasn't until hearing that he was accused for the charge related to Maddie that this now teen posted her story on social media, which resulted in investigators reopening her case. But that wasn't all that emerged from Cavion's past. In September of 2020, 16-year-old football player Remy Hildego collapsed on the football field after suffering heat stroke and died. And sources were able to dig up a recorded diss track by Cavion, where he was calling women horrible names and mocking the rival football player's death. Cavion created a song with vulgar lyrics about him and just mocked his unfortunate passing. Remy's mother, Ashley Robertson, had since branded Cavion as evil and said that it points to his character. Remy and Cavion played football against each other previously, and Cavion had even approached Remy's mom at one point to offer his condolences, but this was before she discovered him laughing on that diss track that he recorded. The family of Maddie has since vowed that her life and legacy will never be forgotten. Dozens of people lined up outside St. Peter Catholic Church earlier this month dressed in pink, and family members said that the pure-hearted adventure seeker would make sure that she posted her obituary on social media, writing, My beautiful angel, one and only daughter, and best friend. She was taken way too soon. I promise to honor you, your legacy, and will do everything in my power to ensure no other family has to endure the pain that we have faced. My peace comes from God. You are leading his army in heaven. Until we meet again, you will forever be in our hearts, and your life and legacy will never be forgotten. I love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you will be. The Madison Brooks Foundation was also created in her honor, and it was formed with goals to provide financial help to those in need to advocate for the safety of young girls and to spread awareness for the gift of organ donation because Maddie was able to donate her heart and her kidneys. And within the Taurus constellation, a star was recorded as the Maddie Brooks star, and it was in the International Star and Space Registry, quoted as only Maddie would have it, The star is located at the tip of the bull's upper horn as a reminder to be brave, strong, and fearless. The community is pretty divided on this case, with many questioning if prosecutors are only charging the four men to have a scapegoat to blame for a blonde hair, blue-eyed, Caucasian girl's death, especially since the video that was shown in court, it allegedly apparently didn't really show that Maddie was being held against her will, and showed that she was consenting and having conversations with everybody in the car. Apparently, she didn't seem like she was in any distress by any means. But a lot of other people are saying that she clearly was intoxicated given her BAC, and she could not have ever consented. 
People are also questioning if there should be any sort of personal accountability as an adult, since the bar video footage showed Maddie drinking random drinks that were just sitting on the bar top. The attorney of Kaysen Carver stated that at one point Maddie had even asked Kaysen to have sex with her as well, but that when Kaysen turned her down, she allegedly slapped him and then publicly questioned his sexuality in a mocking way. Using very vulgar language to the driver of the vehicle, insulting the driver of the vehicle, implying that the driver of the vehicle uh, is not straight based on him not wanting to engage in certain activities with her. Um, again, it doesn't put anybody in the best light, but again, not being put in the best light isn't the same thing. The defense is also claiming and disputing that the BAC test that was done at the hospital was inaccurate due to Maddie's ability to walk and talk as clearly as she was via the footage. Well, I will say this, that we plan on hiring expert witnesses. If anyone does any casual research on what a point three one nine is, that is alcohol poisoning and potential death. Based on her actions that evening, leading up to getting into the car with the young man. Based on the fact that information from Reggie's have come out to say that she did not have any other alcoholic beverage from around 12.50 into the time that she left, gives us reason to believe that the results of that, those results are inaccurate. And I would just add that uh, if you have a .319, your motor skills shut your body down, you can't walk, you can't talk. You're lapsing in and out of blackout, and you risk death. Read it. Read, read the symptoms of a .319 BAC. The evidence that we've seen so far on the video of Miss Brooks running across the street in front of Reggie's, that undermines the police version of events. And until our experts can look at what happened, we believe that the BAC that they're saying is inaccurate. Now, the family of Madison are blown away by the suspect and the defense's attempts to victim blame here. Carrie Miller, the attorney representing the Brooks family, spoke out to set the record straight so that Maddie is not blamed as a victim. This was after attorneys for the four men stated in a press conference that Maddie wouldn't have been complaining about the alleged attack if she was still alive. So the family attorney, Carrie Miller, said, I was blown away by that comment. I mean, these men, these clients, gave sworn statements that they had sex with this young girl who was overly intoxicated. He told the media that the goal of Maddie's mom is to never let this happen again and for no family to have to feel the pain that she is feeling. The defendant's attorney stated that they do not intend to try this case in the media, but they do, however, intend to state the pertinent facts in this case while being as sensitive as possible to all parties involved. That's right. And I think ultimately, you know, we had a judge who set the bonds this week. And so that's just the, the judge who's setting the bonds. When this goes before a judge who actually hears the case, from what I'm being told, they are going to ask the judge to say, hey, look, judge, there's no probable cause here. And if a judge determines that there was no probable cause for the arrest of these young men, it raises questions about whether this case can even proceed um, forward because, you know, there was no probable cause and these men were arrested. When you see these videos, based off of what the attorney just said, it raises questions again. Was she held against her will? Was she a willing participant? Was she intoxicated to such a level that she could not consent or wasn't in her right mind? And those are all questions that experts, toxicologists, and a judge and a jury will have to ultimately decide. After Maddie's death, two LSU students decided to do something to make young women feel safer after a night out. They did this by creating a group where girls can ask for rides, and one of the group's female drivers will pick them up and make sure that they get home safely. We spoke with two young students who are now working on a way for women to ask for help in these uncomfortable situations. A lot of girls on this campus feel alone. I want them to feel like they have girls there for them. Alicia Ortolano and Caitlin Bakewell started the group LSU Girls Ride after Madison Brooks's death. A girl can send a message asking for a ride, and one of the group's female drivers will pick her up and take her where she needs to go for free. Well, I've also been personally abandoned and put in a vulnerable, scary situation, and I had to walk home. In just one week, the group has grown to over 800 members. Hoping more girls will take advantage of this and be like, hey, I need a ride, instead of just walking home or getting a ride from a total stranger. 
This was a senseless and horrific tragedy that could have been completely avoided. Who knows where everybody would be if Reggie's had been held accountable for their actions in the past, or if just one of those four men had some sense in their brain to stop this from happening. Especially the 28-year-old, who in my opinion certainly should have known better and put a stop to what was happening in the backseat. And if they did in fact record her consenting to these activities while laughing at her, it's my opinion that they recorded it for a reason. To protect and safeguard themselves because they knew what they were doing was wrong, yet wanted proof that she consented. Because why else would you record it, and why would you be laughing while recording it? But what do you think? That's just my opinion. My heart absolutely aches for Maddie's family and friends as they mourn this giant loss because she just had so much going for her and I know that she would have done great things. She had such a history of excelling at all aspects in her life. But like I said, there is a lot of division with this case and I'm curious, where do you stand on it? Do you believe that these four men are in fact responsible and that they took advantage of this girl? Do you believe that she was a consenting adult and responsible for her own actions because she made the choice to get that intoxicated? Where do you believe the liability and the blame falls here? Because let now, everybody's life has changed. This young girl is gone and has died. And there are so many different points within the night where things could have changed and somebody could have intervened and the story could have gone an entire different way. So where does the blame sit? What do you think? I'll mention it again. This case is hot, hot, hot in the media right now and striking a nerve with a lot of people because whatever your belief is on this case, people are standing firmly in their belief. So it has caused so much tension and so much division and new facts and new information and footage even is surfacing weekly, if not even daily. So I'm going to make sure to keep you guys updated on this case. It's a very sensitive one, but one that is very, very important to discuss in my opinion. So as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you do so that you don't miss those updates. But as you know, if you've been following me for a while, you know it is much faster for me to post case updates on my Instagram. So if you're not following along there, make sure you do. It's at underscore Annie Elise. It's just way quicker for me to be able to jump on there via story and give you guys the case updates if I can't get to YouTube in time and, you know, do the whole record and edit and post thing. So if you want to make sure that you stay updated, not only in this case, but all other cases, make sure you're following along there in addition to being subscribed to this channel which there's been some confusion lately subscribing to the channel is free it's not a membership or anything all you have to do is press that subscribe button I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen with me today on this case because I know it was a sensitive one I know it wasn't easy to hear and I know there is a lot of division out there so I ask that while you share your opinion in the comments please just be respectful in doing so wherever you feel the blame and the liability lies all right guys I will keep you updated thanks again for tuning in and until the next one stay safe